breast augmentation, it's at the top of the charts for cosmetic surgical procedures. And in fact, in 2014, this cosmetic surgery takes on a whole new shape. I found out more as I visited Advanced Aesthetic and Laser Surgery. Take a look. No, I'm not here playing some kind of odd game of Chinese checkers. These are breast implants. <laughs> That's what we are doing today. We're going to talk to Dr. Jim McMahon from Advanced Aesthetic and Laser Surgery, who you've done a few of these in your day, haven't you? Yeah, I had a fair number. Yeah. And in that day, you've seen some changes. A lot of changes in the styles of implants, the types of implants, the, all kinds of things. Well, for those who have never experienced anything like this, let's kind of take them through the ABCs of what this really is. So what we're seeing here is just that. It depends on what you need, what your preferences are, but this would be basically a tray of breast implants. It's a tray of options. These, uh -huh. are, mostly, these are mostly different sizes. These are all silicone implants from a small one, about 210 cc's up to about 500 cc's. So kind of a pretty, pretty big difference in size oh, there. Oh, yeah. But uh, this is the old <laughs> pre-1990 silicone again. implant. You can see it's very thin oh, shell, boy. very thin gel. And that was kind of the first generation implant. Is that right? We'd like still to still occasionally we'd see like people with apologize these. Apologize to the first generation. Of <laughs> yes. <those. laughs> yes, but you still see some people come in with those. It's amazing. Come but, a long way. You know, saline implant versus a silicone implant, a smooth implant versus a textured implant. Wow. These two implants are actually the same size, but this one's smaller around so that it projects more. So that's called a high profile implant. Oh my gosh. This one being a moderate profile implant. They even have a low profile that's even flatter and an ultra high that, that's even higher than that. So those are, those are kind of new. Okay, so I know when people decide or there's a need or a want for augmentation, you make the decision, are you gonna have your implant over the top of your muscle or under your muscle? When I trained, uh -huh. we all did it on top of the muscle. A little bit easier operation, maybe a little bit less painful. But over time, things change. And we discovered that underneath the muscle has a lot of advantages. Uh -huh. And on top of the muscle has a lot of disadvantages. I don't think I've put an implant on top of the muscle in 10 years. It's, you have more rippling, mm -hmm. it feels more fake, it looks more fake, it gets in the way more of doing mammograms. You have a higher risk of what's called capsular contracture, and that's basically where the scar tissue squeezes the implant and makes it hard and painful. Uh. And all that happens more when it's on top of the muscle. Okay. Underneath the muscle, you also have the muscle supporting the implant. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of gravity resistant over time, whereas on top of the muscle, it's just the skin, and the skin's gonna stretch out, and it's gonna start to sag. Well, I know you can make anybody look the way they want, and that's the key. It's all about aesthetics in this case. Right. If it's what you want, what you desire, you have plenty of options, and of course, you can come right here. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. It's your move, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> what a good guy, Dr. James McMahon.